Welcome back. My hair's in the way. Oh, man, I'm tired. <clears throat> if you see this later, if you don't catch it live, consider yourself lucky because I care about you and I want to record this. So what I wanted to show you was how I came up with my DIY laser trip wire um, alarm system. So I had this idea actually while I was uploading the last video. So I was editing the video, I was uploading it, and then when I was writing the description, I thought, you know, it'd be really fun. And what I always wanted to do is a simple DIY laser trip wire. And that's what we're doing. So I'm going to show you really quick. We're just going to get right into it. And um, I'm going to show you what I've been working on. I was able to make this in like less than a day. First, let me check my audio. Uh, da, da, da. Make sure the audio is not bad. Yeah, it's not bad. All right. <laughs> this is a test stream number two. So we're going to head on over to this setup right here. Okay, so I got the code all ready to go. This code took me um, about half a day to write. I took parts from other things that I had learned in Elliot Williams' book, uh, programming, learning to program, man, it's like my favorite book and I still don't remember. Hold on. All right. Here it is. L make AVR programming, learning to write software for hardware, Elliot Williams. And so if you have that book or if you ever get it, um, the reason why I recommend it is even if you're not programming things in the C language or you're not even touching this AVR uh, brand, this type of microcontroller, it's still going to help you to gain some insight into how the chips work. Elliot is really, really good at explaining how things work, and he does it in a way that's fun and interesting, even if you feel overwhelmed. I felt overwhelmed for a couple of years. But I told myself that I would never give up and that I would stick with it. And eventually I started to understand it. And fairly recently, it just, it's clear now. Everything is so clear. Um, there are some very complicated things that I still don't understand, but I understand the process now of understanding and comprehending um, these chips. And the reason why it's so difficult is because they're so logical. You know, um, they either they either they're they're very they're very lo like super logical. Like you can't say there is no gradient, there is no scale, um, there's no rainbow inside of a chip, right? It's either yes or no, and everything is dependent upon yeses and nos, and that's why. I had to learn how to program these chips in the C language because I felt like when I was doing Arduino, I wasn't getting I wasn't getting it. And I felt like I didn't have that much control once I did, you know, copy and paste somebody else's stuff. And that's what a lot of people do is they copy and paste. And yeah, I mean copy and pasting has its place like when you want to save time or you have a code that you know just works, you get into another file, you copy that, you paste it in, and you adjust it for your new code. That makes sense to me. That that's fine. My problem was the Arduino was being um, advertised, hyped up, and pitched as this you know easier thing to do. And it, for me, it wasn't. It was even harder than programming in C. Um, so when you learn how to program these chips, it's really cool because you feel like you have this this sort of control and you get an inside peek to all of this technology that you're buying and paying a lot of money for on a, on a regular basis. Um, and you're bridging the physical and digital worlds together. Um, it's, it's really fun and it's, it's a lot of pain, a lot of suffering and a lot of patience. And like I said, if you don't give up, you will be rewarded. So, if you want to get a deeper insight into what I am talking about um, in this quick, this is just a quick stream. I don't, 
I don't expect many people to find this originally, but I think over time it'll be recorded for later views, and I think people will find it there. Um, this is the book. You can't see it, right? Everything I touch turns to a hologram. I'm sorry. Uh, it's This is the book. I always put it in my description. Um, it's well worth the money. It's hard to find good books that are still relevant for programming hardware. A lot of these books get outdated or they they don't work, <laughs> like the code doesn't work, or um, they're just really boring. And this is the greatest book I've ever come across. I paid $45 on Amazon. Uh, you might be able to get it for cheaper, and you, if you get the Kindle version, if you like Kindle, uh, you could have it digitally, and it's much cheaper than having the actual physical copy. But I, I'm kind of old school, I like physical copies, so. I like to write notes in them, okay? All right, I like to write notes, uh, it's fun. All right, so let's move on to this actual build. Um, I did not clean up the wiring for this. I just was kind of excited to just share it with you and um, I didn't want to undo it because I don't know if I would be able to piece it back together, especially um, doing this practice live stream. So um, let me just show you what I'm working with here before we get into the code. Here we go. Oh, phone, where are you? There we go. All right. So this is my silicone mat. I also got this. Um, this thing's fantastic. Um, you can solder on this thing. You can roll it up. And I like to take everything that's on the mat, and it's fairly sticky like because it's silicone, and I just slide it, you know, on top of a desk or something and get it out of the way because um, I don't have a whole lot of room to work with here so it's very convenient for that. By the way, Halloween's coming up. I heard there was a coronal mass ejection or something that's coming by Halloween but good luck with that. <laughs> um, okay. All right, I gotta focus. All right, let me adjust this camera. Okay. Let's zoom out a little. There you go. Okay. So here's my chip. And now we'll zoom back in. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So here's the top of my chip. Don't worry about all of my wiring here. Okay. I'm going to take you through it step by step. So don't worry. So here is our beautiful little chip. Um, this is the top of the chip. That's what that little divot is. And so I have my wiring hooked up from my USB programmer. I got this at SparkFun. Uh, it was like 15 bucks, and you have to get the ribbon cable. You're gonna need that. And it just hooks up to your computer via old school USB. And it has the reset line, SEK, Meso, Mosey. Those are all hooked up here. And I also have five volts coming in here, okay? And I also have my ground wire coming in here. So this whole rail, this 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 whole rail goes all the way down. That is where I've hooked up my ground wire. And this whole rail here is where I've hooked up my uh, five volts. Um, so that's going, and I bridged that into the chip here, as you can see. And I have a little capacitor here. I'll show you which one it is. This is a little ceramic capacitor. Oh, I don't have autofocus. Come on. It says 104. You see that? So that's the rating that I have. It's a 104, and you can look up how many picofarads that is. I am not familiar with too much about capacitors. I just use whatever's recommended. And that's all you need, and that'll balance out a little, um, like if you have little hiccups in the way that, like your code is good, but your chip, you know, everything doesn't seem to be functioning correctly. It has little stutters. That's what you're going to want to uh, put just to stable out that, uh, that flow of electricity. All right. So let's move on. You notice here I have this little thing with a little swirly thing on it. That is a 
light sensitive resistor. Okay, so this is a normal resistor and a resistor, if you look at my website, a resistor just restricts the flow of electricity. And here's the uh, b color bands, you can look that up. Um, there's some apps on phones that you can use or you can just Google it. Uh, so this is a very simple resistor and my resistors are all kinds of unorganized. So depending on the type of resistor you use, I think this is a 10,000 ohm resistor, I'm not sure. Um, you're gonna need something like 10,000 to 100,000 ohm resistor to work with this thing. Okay, so the legs are a little long and I'm gonna clean it up for the final video when I actually make my thing. So we're going to be shining a laser on top of this LDR. And the LDRs are very sensitive to red and green light, so that makes it perfect for red and green lasers. And I'm going to I'm going to be holding it up. Here's the laser right here. It's a little simple um you can get these anywhere really. It's not really a laser actually. It's more of a uh um, it's an LED basically and it has a little lens and you can focus it and that's pretty much what's popular on the market. It's cheap, it still works so you don't need an actual laser. Um, so the laser I'm going to hook up, I don't want to blast 5 volts through it. I want the chip to supply electricity to it like you know 3 volts or whatever the chip puts out. Um, it's a little bit less and so I have the laser hooked up to this pin here, this is uh, pin PB0. So if you remember the diagram, let me see if I got that here. Oh, shoot, look at that. <laughs> All right, so here's the diagram. Wow, that's a mess. That is a mess. So we're on pin PB0 right here, okay? You don't have to worry about any of that. That's just other stuff that it can do. So that pin is connected to these like special things that it can do. That's like clock zero and anyway. So this is pen PB zero and for some reason, you know, they had many meetings, I'm sure, and they decided that this was the way to route all of these pins. So the port B pins go from zero, one, two, three, four, five. They jump over here to six and seven. And they have PC zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. And those are all analog to digital converter pins. And we're gonna be using this one right here, ADC0. This is the uh, the pin that we're gonna be hooking up our light sensitive uh, resistor. You can see there's a little wire here, this white wire, and it's gonna go all, you see it jumps out of the screen and it comes all the way down to PC0. And then we're going to um, hook up an LED to PB1 down here. This is just the way that I chose to set it up, and you can set it up different ways, but even if you're working with a Raspberry Pi, a Pico, or you know the Arduino, which uses this chip, you need to know which pins are capable of doing analog to digital. And I'll show you why in a minute when we go over the code. So I have my five volts coming into VCC and then I have my ground wire hooked up so you can see it's jumping you can, you can see oh you know what I just realized you can't see this this hand that I have uh, let's see yeah so this is the white wire coming in here sorry <laughs> I was using the the mouse cursor and I realized you guys can't see it um, so I have my voltage here from my USB programmer and it also has ground coming in. So you can see all those are here. Um, you can look how to hook these up online. And anyway, all of these are required, including the reset, to program the chip. So that's why I have them hooked up because I'm gonna be flashing code once or twice and show you if it makes a difference when I change the code or not. And then one more thing that's really important that I found out was you hook up the voltage, you hook up the 
the ADC, the analog to digital converter, you hook up the ADC voltage pin to the same voltage uh, coming in here on this side. So it has a common kind of balanced reference of what a normal voltage is. And if you don't do that, you might have some, uh, some hiccups. You might have some problems. So that's why this is um, coming all the way on this side. So it's, it's tapped into that same rail that's supplying the voltage to the chip. So that's what that is. And I want you to remember that. That took me a while to figure out. And if you have servos that are jittery and stuff like that, that could be one of the reasons why. You could also put one of these capacitors over on this side and um, to balance it out, you put it on, you know, the, the ground rail and the, the voltage uh, rail. So you'd bridge, you know, you'd bridge it here and here. You'd have these two. Uh, this is voltage reference. What we're going to be doing, so the analog to digital converter is very complicated and very difficult to explain um, how it works. And I'm not going to do that. Um, I would recommend you look in Elliot's book. He explains it the best he can. And it's weird science and effing magics. Okay. So just think like that. <laughs> uh, so we're going to be using an internal voltage as reference. We don't, we don't need an external voltage coming in here as the reference basically. And I'll show you that set up in the code. All right, so let's let me turn this off and show you. Okay, so let me hook up the uh, the, the LED. So this is my LED. Remember, the longer leg is what is that on my finger? Oh, it's spray paint. So I finished that mask. Maybe I'll show it to you in a minute. So the longer leg is the positive end. Just think if you cut it off and you cut it in half, you'd be able to make a plus sign. And that's the positive symbol. So that's an easy way to remember that. <laughs> All right, so here we have our, take that out. We have our LED. I'm gonna hook the positive, the longer end, to this pin. And I'm gonna take the ground one and just put it right here. A lot of people will suggest that you use resistors to protect the LEDs. They can burn out really easily and it depends on what kind of LED you have. Some of them can only take one and a half volts to maybe three volts. It depends on what color the LED is, which is very interesting. And you can also hook up two resistors in series like this. So you, ha you, know, you have them in series like one after another, and that divides the voltage. So if you have three volts coming out on this pin right here, it's, that's gonna divide it to you know half of what that is. So it'll be 1.5 volts, and that's a lot safer, and it'll also dim your LED a little bit. I'm going to be a little reckless, and I'm going to just see how this goes. This is a green LED. It's really bright. It's a UV LED. <laughs> and it might take over the entire screen. We'll, we'll see how that goes. Um, later on, I will be replacing the LED with this simple little speaker. It's like a piezo speaker or whatever, or um, I don't know what this is called. This is this is uh, in your computer. Like, um, you know, like when you turn on your computer, it goes beep. That's what this thing is. This is the same exact, um, kind of speaker and I took it out of my computer and I'm using it um, soon for the actual alarm. I'll probably have flashing LEDs along with the alarm. Um, the alarm to set this up is a little bit complicated and um, it's gonna take a completely separate tutorial just for this piece because you have to do a lot of um, magic with a function you have to create the, the right function and then you have to set up like a library of frequencies and it works with frequencies and, and timing so it gets very complicated so we'll do that later for now we're just going to hook up um, 
So here's our laser connected to ground and our pen here, PB0. And I'm gonna be holding that in place over top of the um, light sensitive resistor. That looks terrible. I'll have to do that at an angle, huh? Yeah, we'll figure that out. That's gonna look cool though. All right, and then I need to explain the photoresistor before we move on to the code. So, the photoresistor, the way it works is kind of confusing, but here we go. Without getting into too much detail, basically, it doesn't matter what end you connect this to. This is the same as a resistor. Um, it's going to basically um, require another uh, a, a simple resistor of like 10,000 to 100,000 ohms. And that you connect to your ground. Okay, so the, you know, whatever my black wire is coming in on, on this blue rail here, that's what that's going to, you see right here, it's connected in there. It's a little bent because I haven't cut it to size, but you can see this, this end of the resistor. It doesn't matter which way the resistor is facing, just like this one. Um, it's going into the ground uh, rail where this uh, ground wire is coming in, this black wire. And then it's going to be here, okay? And then the other end of this is going to be connected to the voltage, okay? This voltage comes in through here, and um, this wire is in between the two. Okay, this wire is the the one that's going to listen in on how much how much um, electricity is allowed to flow through this guy, and that's all it does. And then it sends that value in analog form, in real physical world analog form of electricity to this pin. And inside here, the analog to digital converter is going to change that number into a digital number. And when we have the digital number, we can work with it in our code to say, when this reaches a certain low number, turn on this LED. And that's all we're doing. That's basically what this is. So um, this is the simple diagram, again, connected to ground with a resistor in between the leg and here. And then in between that, we tap into it with a wire and that goes to our ADC, which is you know here or here, these pins here. So port C. If you have a Pico or a Raspberry Pi or um, even if you're working with the actual Arduino board, um, remember that it's the same concept, okay? It's just gonna look different in your code basically. But these chips all operate very similarly. Um, okay, so let's move on to the code. Oopsie daisy. Uh, dun, 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 dun. All right, there we go. So this is my code, and I wrote out notes just to make it easier. All right. So I, I don't know. I just wanted to come. I just wanted to make this video, even if nobody watches it now. I, I still want this recorded for you to be able to watch later, and. Um, I just wanted all the notes to be here. I didn't want to be trying to look this stuff up or, you know. Anyway, so let's get into it. At the top, you can see I have my include files. Um, this one is... Uh, wait, you can't see that, can you? <laughs> Sorry. All right, so at the top, I have my input-output and my util delay. These are included when you install the GCC toolchain. Uh, like if you download AVR Dude and, and install everything, that's included. That has certain functions that we can use and, and certain references that we can use. Like down here, you know, add mux and all that stuff. This is all predefined in, in, in this. All right, and then you'll notice I have something called usart.h. This is Elliot Williams's, um, uh, 
header file that he provided with his book. I suggest you go buy it. Um, and this is how we can connect to your uh, PC and communicate with your um, PC in order to show what kind of values are coming out on the ADC. So when you start working with converting analog values to digital stuff, like if you're working with a joystick, um, like somebody I know around here, if you work with a joystick, you're going to need to know what kind of values are coming in onto that pin and being converted. Otherwise, you're just guessing. And that is really, 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 really difficult. I've done it before and it's a waste of time, so don't do it. Um, so we're gonna be using his header file and um, I'll show you when I use the functions that are detailed in that header file. And again, it's, it's a very complicated header file um, that he's already done. So I like to use that and um, when I need to actually see values on my computer. Okay, so let's go, go into, here's main, okay? INT space main void in parentheses and then open bracket and the close bracket is all the way down here. All right, let's see if you can see that. Last time I noticed when I made the, uh, the other video, I, for some reason it couldn't show all the way down when I had, um, I had like two if statements and it didn't include it, but that's okay, it was in the live stream anyway. Um, all right, so yeah, you can see that. All right, so that's where that closes. Return zero, you just have to do that. That's what normal C programs on Windows do. It never reaches that line, but you put it in there anyway. Just do it, okay? All right, so let's go to main. So main is where we call everything to the stage, and that's where we're going to... Um, so if we have like, you know, our analog to digital converter, any of that stuff, we're going to say, hey, hey, come here and turn on. Um, you can see right here, I just, I don't even have like a function. I just turn it on. I don't put it, I don't wrap it into a function and like give it a name. I just, I just did it, you know, like right here. It doesn't matter. It's the same thing. Um, if you want a cleaner kind of code, you can put it in wrapping and put it in the preamble up in here and give it a name, but I just didn't care. Um, and then here is the loop while one. So that means while it's on, while the chip is running. One means yes, one means on, one means continuously, you know, on. So, and then here's our open bracket and here's our closed bracket. Do I still have you? All right, let's keep going. Um, if this is confusing, um, don't worry, I was confused for many years, but once I understood, I just felt like all these doors opened up, and it's really amazing. So, believe in yourself and never give up, okay? Just stick with it. All right. So here we are in Maine. Um, before we get to Maine, actually, let's go up and check out the ADC. So when we're going to be listening on that white wire that I showed you, um, when we're listening to the light sensitive resistor with a squiggly line on it, we need to set up a way to read those values and convert them to digital values because it's coming in as raw electricity, like you know amounts of electricity. So the more light that's on it, um, I think the, the higher the flow of electricity, and so it's gonna produce a higher digital number when you do the conversion. And I'll show you, I'll show you um, with this USART, this is why I included it, it's not my code, but you know, I wanted to include it to show you what those values look like in real time. Um, so we're gonna use a 16-bit integer, okay? So it's unsigned, and it's 16 bits unsigned 16 bit um, so the unsigned means it's not positive or negative and that saves a little bit of memory in your chip and it's just good practice to do it and we're going to call it read adc all right and when you do functions usually you start with a lowercase and then the second word is uppercase it just helps with readability 
And ADC is capitalized anyway, so there you go. Uh, you can call it anything you want, basically. So we have read ADC, and what the read ADC is going to do is it's going to take into account a parameter. What does that mean? It's going to deal with an 8-bit unsigned integer, okay, just an 8-bit number, 0 to 255. And we're going to call that channel, okay? I also got this from Elliot Williams' book. You can rename that anything you want. Um, he called it channel, and I like that word, so I'm using it. So this is a function to listen to the ADC pins and start the conversion. Okay, so that's what this is. And it gets really confusing. Like I said, I'm not going to explain how it works. I'm just going to show you. <laughs> I'm not going to give you the light. I'm going to show you the light. All right. So we have our... Analog to digital muck supplier. The muck supplier is what's actually doing the work. And it takes like the, the, the highest two bits and like the lowest two bits. Anyways, it like simulates a 16-bit number. It's an 8-bit chip, but it simulates a 16-bit number or a 10-bit number. It takes the... Yeah, anyway, you saw my video, um, Analog to Digital Converter Prison. Uh, because I was trying to figure out how this thing works and it was a pain in the ass. So basically what it does is it takes it takes like the low numbers and the high numbers of the values that are coming in on the pin and the analog to digital converter, it combines that into a 10-bit number. So it takes two 8-bits and it combines it to a 10-bit. Okay. So it's like the high and the lows and it boom, it puts it together. Again, I'm not going to go too much into that. So these are the settings that you can copy from this code. Um, I'm not going to explain this. And then this is channel, okay? So it's going to do this, and it's going to look for channel, okay? It's going to do it on the channel, okay? Channel is going to be whatever pin number we put in there. So I'm going to put a zero in there because it's going to be PC zero. So that's the channel that it's going to listen to. It's going to say, you know, do this on channel. So if the channel's zero, if I write zero up here, it's going to go to ADC zero. Just remember that. Okay, and then we have analog to digital converter serial register A. Um, and we turn on, we bit shift, you know, we say, you know, turn on bit shift, the analog to digital start conversion. Okay, so this is starting the conversion. That's what this is. And then we're going to loop until the bit is clear on the analog to digital converter serial register A on the analog to digital start conversion. So it just waits until it, it's looking for that bit to clear whenever the conversion. I got hair all on my face. Ah, it's tickling my face. It's, uh, it's going to wait until that bit is clear. And when that bit is clear, it's going to say, all right, give me, that's what the return means, give me the ADC value. Give me that ADC value. Come on, give it to me. All right, um, so that's what this is. This is a function that's called read ADC, and it does all of these things. Once again, it listens on whatever channel we tell it to, okay? The, the channel is all those pins you saw, PC0, PC1, they said, you know, ADC0, ADC1, ADC. So we're going to tell which channel, 0 through 6, I think, 0 through 5. And then we're going to tell it to start the conversion. And it's going to wait until the bit is clear. There's like a little flag inside of it that says it's done. And when it's done converting, we're going to tell it to return that value. All right. Whew. I think we need a little break. So... Let's see. Let's see. Hold on. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Yeah, we definitely need a little break. Let's see what Jeff has to say, all right? Jeff, you got something to say? So... You, uh, want to play a game? Let's play my favorite game, 
Staring contest. All right, all right. Ready? Don't blink. Go. Don't blink. You are not going to win this game, I promise. Hey, do you mind getting me a snack from over there? Hey, yeah, you. What? Are you just gonna sit there and not subscribe? <sighs> you didn't even push the like button, did you? Those are some nice arms you got there. And hands. And fingers. I'm sure you could use one of those fingers to, you know. <clears throat> Click something. Am I a joke to you?
Well, oh, 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 man, it was off the whole time. Mm. All right, that's why this is a test. That's why it's a test. Oh man, my mic was hard muted. All right. I'll probably delete this, but I'm still gonna finish it. All right, so we have our ADC value equals read ADC on pin PC zero, that's channel zero, delay it for 10 microseconds. And then here's where the real juicy part is. If the ADC value is less than 50, Okay, so I found out through using the USART that it was less than 50 um, when I covered it with my hand, um, when I covered when I blocked the laser. So um, port B was, yeah, port B turns on the LED. Okay, so if the ADC value right here, if that's less than 50, it turns on the laser, or it turns on the LED. It's confusing. All right, so there's the curly brace to close that if statement. And then we say otherwise, using else otherwise, keep it off. Okay, so that's what the and equals and then flip it. Okay, so the and equals say, yeah, 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 include, you know, include whatever its state is, if it's off or on, and then put a one in there to turn it on and then flip it. So that means turn it off. So that's uh, on PB1. Okay, so that's otherwise keep the LED off. And so we have, um, this is a really complicated thing. Don't worry about it. This is part of the USART. So you don't have to include this with your code. Um, this is just for USART. This and the init USART that sets it up. Um, we're just gonna, sh I'm just gonna show you what it looks like in terminal so let me hook it up uh, let's see let's see let's see if I get a phone there we go 
I'm going to hook up my do 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 do. I'm going to hook up my programming programmer, and you can see the laser is on. Boom! Look at that! Holy crap! It's bright. Oh. Oh. There we go. I got it. Doo -doo -doo. Okay. And also, I'm going to hook up my LED to ground. There you go. See? I've already flashed it. Pretty cool, huh? Let me make that uh, a little more zoomed out for you. There you go. So you'll see. See how it works? Pretty cool, huh? <laughs> yeah. So that's basically um, how it works. So let me show you the values that are coming in just to give you an idea of what to expect on your end. So I'm going to hook up my ground wire. So this is my serial thing. It's basically, it's just a USB cable that you could buy on eBay and they've cut it and they split the wiring and they put it into this, uh, <laughs> this header pin thing. Look at this thing. I mean, that's all it is really. You could do it yourself. I mean, you could solder up some, you can cut these, splice it and solder up, you know, your own solid uh, connections to it. So anyway, we have the ground going into the ground rail. Oh, triggered the alarm. And we have this going into the transmit and receive up here. You can look at your diagram. Oh, no, not there. Oh, 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 there we go. Okay, so I'm hooked up and now I'm gonna put it in the computer. There, <laughs> nothing smoking, nice. All right, and then I'm going to, let me uh, bring this scene in for you. I'm gonna capture a new window. Let's say, uh, what's it called? Uh, terminal so I have a terminal program you can there's a lot of them that you can use I don't what is this called terminal version 1.9 B made in 2013 by some dude named Bray plus plus I don't know thank you Bray plus plus um, there it is okay let me see Oh, there it is. You can see it. Oh, cool. All right, so yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. Slide that over. Okay, look at us. Look at us. Okay. Um. Yeah. There we go. Perfect. All right. So there's terminal. And I'm going to connect. Ooh, which one? Oh, shoot. I think it's COM5. There it is. Boom, nailed it. Okay. So these are the actual values coming in from the chip. Um, this was when I had the prescaler set. So, I mean, it doesn't matter as long as you set the code to have the correct, you know, you know, when it's less than 50 or whatever. So you'll see it's getting 99 right now, okay? Now, if I put my finger in front, you'll see it goes to zero, right? Look at that. If I go a little bit over, 40, 50, okay? So I said when it triggers 50, 
to turn on the LED. And you can see those numbers coming in. Isn't that beautiful? So that's why I included the USART um, library from Elliot William, Williams. And it's very, very handy when you're trying to troubleshoot why things aren't working. And you can see the actual values. It's, it's gold, really. And I, w I found that this worked at 1,200 baud rate. I don't know why. I, my baud rate is 9,600. My chip is at 8 megahertz. I don't know. It for See, if I go to 9,600, it gives me garbage. See that? Whatever. It's a very old program, so I'm sure there's better stuff. Maybe I, I'm doing something wrong. I don't care. So there it is. Cool, huh? Anyway, so that's how it works. And um, let me show one more thing. So I'm going to... What? No rule to make clean. What? Ah, okay. I didn't include a, a make file. Hold on one second. All right. So I just got a, this is a, a copy of, it's a simpler copy of what I was working on. I had the speaker proportion, um, not proportion, <laughs> uh, the speaker part in my other um, code. And I, I made it simpler for this uh, video. All right, let's see, make file. I'll probably delete this though because I screwed it up. Good test run though. Right. Alarm. Oh, shit. There goes the alarm. Boom. I got there. Ah, boom. All right. So going into the make file. Let me see if I can drag this into programmer's notepad. And then. There we go. Okay. So there's my make file. I copied it, dragged it into my folder that contains this the C file for this program. And now I'm going to make sure it's edited. So I'm at 8 megahertz at mega 320p chip. 9600 upper lower for the baud rate. Um maybe I can change that. I don't, I don't care. Skynet demo. Ooh, that was a long time ago. So this is just called alarm. Dot C, so it's capital. See, I broke my own rule. <laughs> so we just say alarm. We don't have to say dot C. And that's it. Save it. Close it. Don't need it. And then make clean. Okay. Program. Oh, oh, oh. I don't have his... um. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh. Let me go into this make file. That is a pain in the ass. Okay. Close that. put this here damn it's so f All right. maybe it'll be able to find that make clean clean it all out make it again program there it goes boom whoa look at that oh I think it's even better hold on Look at this. Look at this. It's like faster.
<laughs> All right. Um, okay, let me uh, reset the terminal program. Connect. So it's getting a value of 103. Zero. It seems faster because I'm not I'm not prescaling it. Look at that. It's like super fast. That's awesome. I'm glad I tried that. Boom. So what if I took like a piece of paper and like slid it in? Look at the values. Okay, so you could play with that. You could say, hey, if it's not completely cutting off the laser, you could make it, you know, if it's less than 10, then trip the alarm. But, you know, this is going to be for a puppy. So when a puppy crosses a line, it's going to let me know. Okay, a little troublemaker. All right, so that's pretty much it for this. Um, that sucks that I didn't realize that my mic was cut out. Uh, during that little intermission, but I think if you look back on the code, I'll probably delete this uh, video. So if you watch it later or if you're watching it now, I'll do it again and I'll do it even better. So have no fear, okay? You will be fine. Everything's going to be fine. Um, but yeah, this is pretty cool. And in the meantime, I'm going to be working on this speaker. And I'm also working on the next big video. Um, we'll see where we take this, okay? I also want to include a um, inf or um, an on-off switch um, for this alarm. Basically, my idea is going to be ah, turn off. My my idea is going to be multiple lasers. Okay. And you have multiple receivers on the other end. You have the L, you know, the LDRs. And then when you can program it with the push of a button. Okay, so you're gonna have a button that you can push. Alright. And that determines how many lasers high that your dog is. So if your dog is only one or two lasers high, you know, you'd push it once or twice. And then the chip will remember your dog is this high. So if you only trip these wires, but not these ones, sound the alarm. But if a human walks through it, you know, or, you know, some kids walk through it, if they're, you know, this high or this higher or higher, then don't sound the alarm. And we'll have to have a timer to check within a given time period how many lasers have been tripped, basically. So that's it in a nutshell. Probably delete this and redo it. Because it'll, oh shit, dropped it. Because it'll be even better. So until then.